There's no such thing as January. Four o'clock is something we invented. Um, there never was a Friday. There's nothing in nature that correlates whatsoever with the days of the week or even with our months. Um, we made a standardized <laughs> overlay and we imposed that overlay not only on our relationships, which is obviously a very dangerous thing to do, but also on our thinking and particularly in how we think about time and what time is or might be for human beings. Without our metrics, without our calendars and clocks and um, measurement systems, time in nature is fundamentally relational. In other words, it's based on physical transformations and exchanges between beings in living places together. And uh, the nature of time in nature is nothing like our idea of a universal public bubble that we are all participating in <laughs> at the same rate um, every, every day. That, it, that it's, you know, we've got this idea that there's a, a universal public time. And of course, this idea goes back to some interesting roots. Uh, before it got abstracted to the degree we suffer with it in. But um, one of the peculiar implications of relativity is that <clears throat> each observer, or e at least each reference frame, each shared reference frame with observers in it, is a unique universe of time. And if we think about how relationships work in animals, living places, cells, we find a very surprisingly different uh, sense and idea of what temporality is about. One where there are thousands of streams, each running at different rates, all carrying intelligent signals and, uh, between you know, organisms and beings and cohorts and places ceaselessly. Uh, we find a manifold of shocking, diverse complexity, uh, nothing like our idea of universal time. We find that individual beings are like bubbles of, of um, time, of local, personal time. And when they meet, there's an exchange across temporalities in many different domains, not just one, not just three. Uh, so one of the implications, the sort of unexamined implications of relativity for organisms, uh, perhaps because in the model Einstein, Einstein puts a clock with each observer, not realizing that organisms are already billions or trillions of little clocks, right? They're trillions of cells in the case of a human being, each one of them having perhaps a thousand different unique domains of temporal relation with other beings in the universe and time. And so in a sense, an organism is like an exploding universe of local temporality, and when they meet, there's an exchange, uh, almost like time lightning or something, and temporalities transform and warp and shift. We all have experience of this. Right? We have experience of dreaming, uh, of having a what seems to be a vast amount of experience in a very short period of time. And uh, we can also have a similar waking experience during a moment of excellence as in sports where something completely seemingly impossible happens or uh, during an accident where time seems to slow down to a crawl even though we may not be able to use that feature um, to any great degree during something that's happening with extreme speed like an automobile accident. So we have experiences of changes in temporality. Uh, and we know that time feels different when we're doing different things in different places with different people. And yet none of our metrics <laughs> have anything to do with that. And they make that seem surprising. What should seem surprising is the idea that time is anywhere regularized. Um, 
there is a de there is a how shall we put it? There is a degree to which it is regularized. Yeah? The sun rises and sets. This we can agree upon. The moon goes through cycles. That's what we um, derived our months from. But we broke it away from the moon cycle and just overlaid it. You know, using a, a kind of crude solar cycle. You know, the fact that there's three hundred and some odd you know days, three hundred and uh, sixty some odd days in a year, um, is <clears throat> not unreasonable. That that fact by itself is not unreasonable. But the closest thing to a calendar would be the combination of the solar. Uh, cycles, which it would be, you know, we, where you going to, where we would start and end, it would be kind of open. Uh, there might be good reasons to start or end it at different places. Um, and ours is vaguely near uh, the solstice, um, but the real cycles would be the sun and the moon uh, and the living things. What the, you know, how each of the living things are changing in time. So we would have a living aspect to the calendar. We would have the sun and the moon as the, if you will, kind of like the hour and the minute hand on a clock, right? um, but, but actually radically different. Nothing like the hour and minute hand on a clock, right? <laughs> if we really think about it. We have, we have the sun and the moon that give us a physical pulse yeah, that's real and true, that's recognizable and, and regular. But we also have uncountless domains of living beings in relation that provide the other musical half of that heartbeat. Uh, and those are highly variable. They don't follow any kind of specifically, they may, they may follow a general pattern, yeah, but never a, a specific one. So I'd like you to, ref to, to reflect with me on the fact that Saturday is a fiction. There has never been a Saturday or a January. Um, and our relationships with time have been flattened and uh, abstracted into an empty set of metrics. This was never the case previously. There were many different relations with time, some of them living, some of them symbolic and mythical, but not merely invented. Um, and I think we've overlooked perhaps the most astonishing and, and urgent uh, feature of our nature as human beings and as intelligences uh, because our peculiar way of being can be easily inhibited by having um, the, a vastly wrong idea about something that's fundamentally integral to our being in nature and minds. So if you get the wrong idea about, for example, what time is, you, you'll have the wrong idea about everything. Right? It's such a fundamental principle that to the degree you can have a better idea, you're going to be more intelligent. And then to, to the degree you have a more crippling idea, you're going to be able to be vastly less intelligent and have insight that is realistic and such. Yeah. So it's very important, I think, that we uh, together rediscover the nature of the human and organismal relationship with temporality and, and understand that the precedence of authority lies fundamentally with living beings, you and me with the temporalities of our own bodies and relationships, not with abstract metrics that stand over us, dominate us, um, damage or destroy our idea of what time is actually about, <laughs> uh, replace it with mechanical metrics, metrics of function, regular, regularized metrics with no meaning whatsoever. They're empty. What does January mean? January doesn't mean anything, right? Um, long ago, and for some people who, you know, for some moderns who have recovered uh, something like this relationship, um, the months were moons, right? And each moon had many 
associations that were based on things that were happening in living relationships during that moon. So there was a living calendar that had an, a basis in actual relationships that we were involved with as human beings and that we could observe and perhaps even participate directly in, and through which we could understand the living unfolding of the flower of time on earth rather than having sort of none of that and having you know, a chop-chop metric of just tick-tock, tick-tock, and down to the atomic clock, right? Um, so public time is a fiction. And each organism, each cell in our body, each person, each animal, each, each living place, is a unique uh, localized bubble, an expression and an expressor of myriad dimensions of temporal relation. A single cell in its complex interactions with its uh, environment in our bodies, in even a few moments, um, is engaged in, in many different strands of temporal relation with uh, the context of our body, other cells, um, the transformations un that it's undergoing in internally, metabolically. It's an incredibly intelligent system and it's comprised of a shocking diversity of temporalities. All organisms are thus, and when they come together, there's a radical exchange. It's as if a kind of temporal superposition emerges in relation. And many of these domains merge or transform and are exchanged. Uh, intelligence is exchanged in, 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 in as relation. Um, whether we speak of cells or insects or fish or animals or you know, snails, whatever we're talking about. The, the whole environment is thriving with this uh, incredible, shockingly sophisticated manifold of temporalized intelligence relations. You know? And this is the nature of our bodies and our minds. And our minds are fully equipped to engage uh, these temporalities and relate with them and recognize and participate in them unless we are deprived of the even the possibility of forming this idea by uh, being dominated with the flat you know public TikTok. it's 4 p.m january 15th 2016 uh, 106 a.m yes. where in nature is that true Nowhere. Certainly isn't any January in nature. There's no 106 a.m. in nature. Um, there's no Friday. There never was a Friday, right? So it's fascinating when we realize that we bind our lives, often our relationships, uh, to a falsified standard that claims that we're all in the same temporal stream, moment, situation, metric, when if you just take two bodies and put them together and sort of look at their metabolic rates, you'll see uh, their heartbeat is different. It may synchronize, right? You may get a superposition, but their heartbeat is different, their, their blood pressure is different, their, meta their metabolic rates are different, right? They have different um, circadian uh, rhythms, right? sleep and waking rhythms. And so you can actually see that each organism is a unique domain of time. And when you put them together, there's exchange. You know, heartbeats may synchronize, right? Breathing may synchronize. Um, so it's a fascinating frontier uh, that we can e explore together. The recovery of uh, intelligent relations with the idea of time beyond metrics as it relates to organisms and actually physics, you know, according to Einstein, uh, his incredible um, idea of relativity rests on a fundamental proof that there is no simultaneity, which was the, the kind of reigning standard and myth. And that myth wasn't destroyed by relativity, apparently. We still believe in and practice uh, a single public time, presuming we're all on the same page and moment and such, 
it's impossible for that to be the case. And the reality is revealed in deep observation, uh, reverence and participation in nature, uh, in true relation with nature and each other. And the unimaginably rich potentials that our humanity, our human birth endows us with. <laughs>